the fifth station. Jesus, the cross is laid on Simon of Cyrene. We adore you, Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As the led is away, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Father, whose blessed Son, Son came not to be served, but to serve, bless all who follow in his footsteps, of, give themselves the service of others, that, that with wisdom, patience, and courage, they may minister in his name to the suffering, the friendless, and the needy, for the love of him who laid down his own life for us, your, your Son, our Savior. Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy God, holy God, of mercy of God. The sixth station. A woman wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. We have seen him without beauty or majesty, with no looks to attract our eyes. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and as one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. His appearance was so marred beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the children of men. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and by his stripes we are healed. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts, to the light, light of, of your countenance, and we, we shall, shall be saved. saved. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain. Grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Station. Jesus falls the second time. We adore thee, o, o Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. All we thy sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. 
he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. But as for me, I am a worm and woman, scorned by all and despised by the people. Let us pray. Almighty and ever God, God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection who lives and reigns forever and ever. ever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy mortal one, have mercy upon us. The eighth station. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross we have redeemed the world. There followed after Jesus a great multitude of the people, and among them were women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Let us pray. Teach your church, O Lord, to mourn the sins of which it is guilty, and to repent and forsake them that by your pardoning grace the result of our iniquities may not be visited upon our children and our children's children. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, The ninth station, Jesus calls for a third time. We adore you, Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. I am the man who has seen affliction under the rod of his rod. He has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. He has besieged me and evolved me with bitterness and tribulation. He has made me dwell in darkness that the dead of long ago. Though I call and cry for help, he shuts out my prayer. He has made my teeth grind on gravel and made me cover in ashes. Remember, O oh Lord, my affliction and bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. He was dead like a lamb to the slaughter. And like a sheep that is to share us is mute, so he opened not his mouth. Let us pray. O 
O God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy mortal one, have mercy upon us. The tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. You have redeemed the world. When they came to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mingled with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And they divided his garments among them by casting lots. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. They gave me gold to eat. And when I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. Let us pray. O Lord, whose blessed Son, or Savior, gave his body to be whipped and his face to be spit upon, give, give us, us grace, grace to accept joyfully the suffering, suffering of the of present, present time, time confident, confident of the glory that, that shall be revealed through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Holy God, The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. When they came to the place, which is called the skull, there they crucified him. With him, they crucified two criminals, one on the right, the other on the left, and Jesus between them. And the script here was fulfilled, which says, he was numbered with his transgressors. They pierced my hand and my feet. They stare and gloat over me. Let us pray. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, you stretch out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving grace. So, so clothe us in your spirit that, that we, reaching forth our hands, hands in love, may bring, bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor, honor and of glory your name. of your name. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy mortal one, have mercy. The twelfth station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, 
he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And when Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And then, crying with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he bowed his head and handed over his spirit. Christ for us became obedient unto death. Even death on the cross. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by Thank his you, glorious you, resurrection you, delivered you us from, from the power of our Lord. enemies, Grant, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy Lord, the Lord, have mercy upon us. The 13th station, the body of Jesus is placed in the arms of his mother. We adore you, Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. All you who pass, behold and see, if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, my eyes are spent with weeping, my soul is in tumult, my heart is poured out in grief, because of the downfall of my people, don't call me Naomi, which means pleasant. Call me wild, which means bitter. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. My tears run down. Sorry, her tears run down her cheeks and she has none to comfort her let us pray lord jesus, jesus christ, christ by your death, death you, you took, took away, away the sin of death, death. Grant, grant us your, your servants so, so to follow in faith where you have led the way that, that we, we may at length Fall asleep, fall asleep peacefully, peacefully in you, and, and wake, wake up in your likeness, likeness for, for your, your tender, tender mercy sake. sake. Amen. Holy Lord, holy and mighty, holy Lord, have mercy upon us. The fourteenth station. Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to the pilot and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it on his, in his own new tomb, which he had hewn from the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb. You will not abandon me to the grave, 
that, that your holy one seek of abstraction. Let us pray. O oh God, God, your blessed Son was laid in a tomb in a garden and rested on the Sabbath day. Grant that we who have, who have been buried with him in the waters of baptism we find our perfect rest in his eternal and glorious kingdom where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy mortal one, have mercy upon us. Your Lord be with you. And As we okay. settle into our seats, we sing hymn 458, 458. for the reading of scripture. Chapter 1 
this 27 to 30. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth. And every tree that has fruit with seed in it, they will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every plant for food. And it was so. Thanks be to God. We continue our reflection on the five marks of mission. And to conclude our series is the evangelist John McFadden, as we look at the integrity of creation and what our summary contain. So let us welcome our the evangelist to bring our series so close on the five marks of mission. God bless you. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. I share my reflection with you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So we have come to the end of the Lenten series, The Five Marks of Mission. Those who journeyed with us from the beginning would have heard Reverend Morn give us the introduction, outlining that these five marks of mission were developed by the Anglican Consultative Council in 1984 and adopted by the church in the province of the West Indies as guidelines for the mission of the church here in the West Indies. He also expounded on the first mark of mission to tell, to proclaim the good news both in the world, both in word and in action, because it has long been said that Christians, as Christians, we are the only Bible that some people read. And one of the most common sayings is, Preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. This quote is attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. Next in the lineup was teach. So now that we have attracted new believers and followers, we just can't leave them on their own. We have to provide a learning environment for all ages. Christian discipleship is about lifelong learning. In the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18, beginning at verse 24, the story is told of a newly converted Jew by the name of Apollos, who was eloquent and well-versed in the scriptures, and he spoke with burning enthusiasm and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. 
Priscilla and Aquila, friends of the Apostle Paul, who were even more versed in the way, which was what Christianity was referred to back in the time, heard him speak one day in the synagogue, but recognized that something was lacking. So they took him aside and explained the way of God to him more accurately. In the same way, we cannot make assumptions that we know everything or because we bring in somebody, they will know everything. We must be open to opportunities to enable us to grow in faith. The third mark of mission calls on us as part of proclaiming the word by our actions to respond to the needs of those less fortunate than ourselves through loving service. We must remember that in serving others, we are serving God, as articulated in Matthew chapter 25, verse 40. Just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. On Tuesday of this week, the fourth mark of mission was discussed transform, but not just ordinary or regular transformation, but transformation of unjust structures in the society. In the Old Testament, the prophets of Israel spoke out about social justices perpetrated on the poor and the marginalized by the authorities and the wealthy. They used incredibly scathing language to challenge the unjust ways in which the rich and powerful steal from the persecuted poor, steal from and persecuted the poor and more vulnerable members of society. And it was no different when it comes to the New Testament, because Jesus, as we have said colloquially, he didn't put water in his mouth when he was calling out Zacchaeus, the tax collector, for stealing from the poor or when he turned over the tables in the temple. As Christians, we are called to do the same and fight for justice, both inside and outside of the church. So before I begin my reflection on this fifth mark of mission treasure, I must tell you that originally there were only four. Then as our understanding of the ecological crisis grew, and the threats to unity of all creation increased, a fifth was added. Now, if that were the case, if it was only four, you know my sermon end right here. So as Archbishop of Canterbury, the most reverend Justin Welby once commented, and I quote, climate change is loading the dice by intensifying storms and making rain patterns less predictable. Climate change is a human thumb on the scale, pushing us towards disaster. It is not a distant danger. It is already with us. As we continue to burn fossil fuels, its effects will only grow." Unquote. The fifth mark of mission calls on us to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. Have we failed in our duty to, to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew life on earth? As a dominant species, and sometimes I wonder if we really are, we, are given, we were given dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living creature that moves on the earth. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, God gave the care of this beautiful garden into the hands, into our hands, saying, Work the earth and look after it. We have failed God's call to be guardians of the earth. As a Lenten disciple, well, Lent is almost finished, but 
you can consider it for years to come or even outside of the Lenten season. We should abstain from the damage we are doing to God's earth. If we believe that as Psalm 24 verse 1 says, that the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, then we must take our stewardship of the earth's resources as part of our mission more seriously. True, stewardship requires changes in human actions, both in moral behavior and technical advancement. We are called to be stewards of God's creation, to care for all that he has made. God's creation points us to him, and we are called to show our love for God by how we care for creation. This is particularly the case as our lack of care for creation has led to massive destruction to the detriment of millions of people who are starving and displaced due to climate change. We who are made in God's image and likeness have a unique responsibility for the well-being of creation in all its varieties. We are called to care for the earth because it is a gift, the product of God's love. However, in recent years, human activity has done great harm in many different ways, and our fragile earth is vulnerable. And to borrow some words from Timothy Watkins, the Baron, who sang, Mother Earth is Dying. Old attitudes have to change, and our priorities rearrange. We have to become more competent the way we protect our environment and fight. Fight for all that is worth. Fight to save Mother Earth. And speaking about old attitudes to be changed, I was perusing a document from 2015 coming out of the 39th Triennial Meeting of the Provincial Synod entitled Plan of Action for the Anglican Church and Province of the West Indies. The document declares that the response to pursuing the mission of the church is expressed in the five marks of mission. So obviously they have endorsed the five marks of mission. For each mark, the document outlines proposed actions which are intended to achieve a number of objectives. In, re in reviewing the actions for the fifth mark, that is to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew life on the earth, one particular program caught my attention. That is, promoting the observation of rogation days within the liturgical calendar. Hmm, sounds like fun. My dear family in Christ, in all my years, I don't think I have ever been part of a celebration of rogation. So I did a little research. Rogation days, like Ember days, they are days set aside to observe change in the season. Rogation days are tied to the spring planting. Well, we don't have spring here. But the day falls pretty close to Corpus Christi, and we know only too well what Corpus Christi is synonymous with. Now, there are four rogation days. The major rogation, which is Sunday, the sixth Sunday after Easter, of Easter, which is the fifth Sunday after Easter Sunday, which this year falls on May 22nd. And then there are three minor rogation days which are celebrated on the Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, immediately before Ascension Day, the 40th day after Easter, which is usually on a Thursday, obviously. So rogation days are really days of prayer and formally also of fasting instituted by the church 
to appease God's anger at man's transgression, to ask protection in calamities, and to obtain a good and bountiful harvest. So how did Rogation Day get its name? Rogation is simply an English form of the Latin rogatio, which comes from the verb rogare, which means to ask. The primary purpose of the rogation days is to ask God to bless the fields of the parish in which they fall, in which the, the church falls. The rogation days are marked by the recitation of the litany of the saints, which would normally begin in or at the church door. And after which the congregation would proceed to walk the boundaries of the parish. And not just walking. And I hope Archie can listen. In. The priest has to beat the boundaries too while reciting the litany and repeating it as, as many times or supplementing it with penitential or gradual psalms. In that way, the entire parish would be blessed and the boundaries of the parish would be marked. The procession would end with a rogation mass in which all the parish were expected to take part. So Archdeacon, Reverend Mourn, I'm putting you all on notice. Strap on your Gideon boots and let's get cracking. We don't have to walk the whole parish because I don't believe that there's anyone alive who can accurately define the boundaries of this parish. We could just make a small trip up the promenade or up high street and come back. I don't want our chicken to be bored like when we went on the visitation exercise. So. And Denise and Lisa, all in that left out because we want the bells and smells. This practice has been somewhat sidelined and just relegated to just praying the assigned prayers on pages 202 and 203, if we remember. But Rogation days focused, focused as they are on agriculture and the changes of the seasons, have seemed less relevant. Still, there are good ways to keep us in touch with nature and to remind us that the church's liturgical calendar is tied to the changing season. Other suggestions coming out of the Plan of Action document include to teach broader, uh, a broader understanding of stewardship and to increase access to literature, general and theological. These objectives of the program is to change attitudes of the Caribbean people towards safeguarding the environment. Another one is to adopt short-term promoting a short-term plan, promoting reduction, reuse, and recycling. And I think a similar program was done some time ago in the past where a competition was held among the various schools and the church groups in the diocese. This is designed to give church members practical experience in developing proper disposal habits and ultimately effective waste management. We are asked also to collaborate with the environmental agencies and organizations like the EME in order to increase advocacy of the, the, by the church towards changing behaviors and the treatment of God's creation. We are to create church-based non-governmental organizations and engage more with Anglican Alliance in order to strengthen the voice of the church on environmental issues. Finally, they're suggesting that we promote greening the parishes so as to encourage the development of alternative renewable sources of energy and thereby accomplish the cost efficiency benefits to be derived maybe the men's ministry or some other parish group 
could spearhead fundraising events so that solar panels can be installed on the roof after the roof is properly prepared, repaired, of course. Just in it. We have a responsibility to protect and to cherish the Earth's ecolo ecological diversity, beauty, and life-sustaining properties. Together, we must hold it in trust for future generations. It was our duty to leave the earth in a better condition that we found it. So now that we have gone through this series of the five marks of mission, I trust that you will make these marks your mission. These marks of mission are just a summary of what we are required to do as Christians. When we meet in our various ministries, I urge you to spend some time on reflection of these marks of mission. And if you need a copy of the documents, Father Mon or myself can supply it to you electronically. We are called to be beacons in this world to guide others who do not know our Lord and Savior Christ, Jesus Christ, to Him. By our baptism, we have become members of the body of Christ. Let us ensure that the church remains relevant as we strengthen our voices on stewardship of creation, transformation of unjust structures in society, proclaiming the good news, nurturing new believers, and responding to those on the margins by rendering loving service. And as I leave, I leave you with a prayer based on the five marks of mission composed by the very Reverend Dr. Ian Luke Dick of Albasca in Alberta, Canada. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, let your presence fill our hearts and overflow in our actions that we may proclaim the good news of your kingdom. Let your glory fill this place let your glory fill this world. And we repeat, let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this world. Lord, fill us with your welcoming spirit of truth that we may faithfully teach, baptize, and nurture those who come to believe in you. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this world. Repeat, let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this world. Lord, as you come to serve and not to be served, fill us with the compassion and insight to respond to human need by loving service. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill the world. And you repeat, let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this world. Lord, let the fire of your goodness and justice burn into us and through us that we may seek to transform the unjust structures of society. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this world. Repeat. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this world. Lord, as you come into our lives to redeem all that is good, guide us in our turn to renew and sustain the life of your creation. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this world. Repeat. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this world. Almighty God, in our baptism, you baptized, you adopted us for your own. Quicken, we pray, your spirit within us, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And all God's people say, Amen. The Lord be with you.
Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Comments? Recommendation? The main action group as they embark on their webinar yesterday, they were fulfilling part of this high mark submission. You may, you may not have seen it that way, but they, in their webinar on domestic violence, spoke about their general theme to recognize respond and refer. And that's all part of the transforming and just structure. So our main group has already taken a step in fulfilling the five marks. You may, you may not recognize that what they're doing, but that is part of it. Transforming and just structures, all men treat women, etc. relationships. So they already have stepped out the forefront to so men continue. I, I mean, I want to ask, you see, we, we, we talk a lot about climate control and just structures. One of the things we have said in our church, we have all sorts of functions and we use non-biodegradable boxes. Uh-huh. All the forms, so you get a box. Many of many a time, those boxes are not biodegradable, and they, they contribute to the destruction of the environment. When we dispose of these boxes in the water courses, the fish, the other sea creatures, these things get into their system, and they die. So what challenge we had back then, I want to put it here and for discussion. When we have function, do we consider the type of sanitary wear that we use? Do we purchase biodegradable that will disintegrate? Or do we use those things that will stay and pollute the earth and cause destruction? So that is some practical things that we want to do so I, I want to put that before us when we have any functions and all these plates and boxes we we give out are we contributing to the structural environment probably not what we for but think about it have his family day coming up what type of cutlery we using to go sit down and eat or these boxes are just thrown on the road and they stay there for years and years, you know, you, you, you have a plot of land, you go to dig it up, you find these things there for years. Boxes for years, bottles for years, and they cause great harm to the environment. So we understand where we are. So yes, look, I would like us to be practical, and not just theoretical. Start with that. When we have function, what type of sanitary way? Do we use in our auction? That's just offer. Thank you for what was shared. Any questions, comments? You just sat there. Anything you heard, you want further explanation on? I can have many questions, but I want to ask you questions right now. We have taken note. I just want to say one more thing. We go, we go, we go, we go, we go on Sunday and so forth. The concept, the culture of that change. That's why we have not, you know, in our, in our environment. Please, that kind of emphasis that you, you mentioned. But some things can be taken up. The culture of that went because we, we no longer agrarian society. When it's an agricultural society, that was very uppermost. But when we move away from that agrarian society, things like these were not given permanence. But there are things that we can take out of them for future reference. So thank you again. And you'll have the opportunity here with no questions, comments. Thank all the presenters.
the trust will have the previous um, presentation together for future reference. This is ongoing, as we hear, it's ongoing, ongoing not just for, for length, but we have to continue to meet and discuss and have conversations as we go along. So the holidays coming up, you are going to the beach. You are going to the water courses. Carry a garbage bag. Right? When you're driving along and you see somebody throw a box at the outside, what do you do? You won't go to them because I might shoot you. But individual this one, you go by a KFC, a KFC or so, in your car, have a little bag. Have a little bag to put your garbage. Start with us before we go outside. All right? You know, we had to teach all children in school. The said, well, they have cleaners, they have cleaners, so they have the garbage outside. All those things we have to teach. Not because you have cleaners, use the garbage bag. Amen? All right. I don't want to give a second lecture here now, because it's whole night. What's the hymn? Six, six, nine. Six hundred and sixty-nine, the offer to him. Let us pray. Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed us. Save us and help us. We humbly beseech you, O Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have delivered us from the dominion of sin and death and brought us into the kingdom of your Son, that we will pray that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his love we may raise, he may raise us to eternal joy, who lives and reigns with you and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And if you have your Book of Common Prayer, turn to page 
72 for the collect for Fridays. Almighty and everlasting God, let our prayers in your sight be as incense, the lifting up our hands as evening sacrifice. Give us grace to behold you present in your word and sacrament, and to recognize you in the lives of those around us. Stir up in us the flame of that love which burned in the hearts of your Son as he bore his passion, and let it burn in us to eternal life and to the ages of ages. Amen. To Christ our Lord who loves us and washed us in his own blood and made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Unto God's gracious mercy and protection, I commit you. May his face shine upon you and grant you peace. And your blessed triumph, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, your loved ones, and those to meet this night and forevermore. Amen. Please remember, this is Palm Sunday weekend. We invite you to wear red. We invite you to wear red our service tomorrow at 6 p.m. and Sunday 7.30 a.m. Again, we invite members to come out 9 a.m. to help make the Palm Courses for the Palm Sunday liturgy. Have a blessed evening. Invite your friends and your family to come out as we celebrate the Lord's triumphant entry into Jerusalem and his passion. Okay. A recession of him 133, 133. Love and mercy for me, never bright and morning star, chance its beams around me. In the cross, in the cross, be thy glory, Allah, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the rain.
Rest me on the river Near the hills I watch and wait Hoping, trusting ever The Lord 